Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is where you are on the world. It's Dr. Mohammed Nizami again with another lecture. Today we're going to talk about the design of a uh, continue with the series of designing um, waveguide to strip line and micro strip line and suspended line transitions that are used in low noise block down converters for SATCOM and other millimeter applications such as 5G, for instance, so 5G transceivers. Um, so today we have a design which I have implemented based on the use of a suspended uh, line fed feeding a uh, probe inside a waveguide. And similar to the other series, uh, the other lectures that I have, um, this probe is a little different in a way that it, it, it still has, basically what it has, let me uh, show you a side view of this. Uh, no, the other way around, we want side view for the, uh, okay. Uh, let's look at the side view from this side. Okay, so we have, a probe that is on top, this one here, and uh, let me show you which one. So we've got this. So we've got the uh, batch matching, okay. This is the probe, okay. There's a probe piece, which is fed by a, um, a transmission line, okay. So um, uh, the uh, batch feed, which we call it here. Okay, and then we have a substrate, a Rogers um, 6002, where the uh, probe sits in. And at the same time, we have on the back of the substrate, a, another batch, okay? And so this here acts as a waveguide to a suspended line transition. And of course now, uh, the LMB or buck or whatever uh, circuit is feeding the, uh, the rest of the system in here, you still need a transition from the um, suspended line to the uh, micro strip line, which the planar circuit board that has the uh, down converter or whatever it has, or the PA or, or in this case. So, um, so this here resembles uh, a lot of you who, who deal with antennas this is really nothing but a batch antenna fed with a parasitic uh, uh, batch on the other side. So the the signal comes in through here from the uh, horn antenna or the wave uh, from the dish or or planar uh, phase array antenna, and then comes in and gets coupled to the power in the probe, and the probe carries it in here. And this design is, is basically, it's treated a lot in the literature. So let me show you, for instance, we have this paper in here, a KA band rectangular waveguide to suspended strip line transition. Okay, and so they very much the same thing. I modified it just a little bit. Uh, okay, so we have this and uh, they, they go through the details of this design and they have fapped it. Uh, one thing they have is they have over here is the design equations, if you like to try this yourself. So uh, another publication that I've found in the literature, if you want to do this at KU band as well, somebody else has also implemented this at KU band. Okay, so you can see here is the response. Uh, the, the strip line to go into theory, let, let's look at the strip line. What is this, uh, the suspended strip line, the suspended strip line, basically, you've got an enclosure, okay, with a, with a substrate material that doesn't have a ground plane. There is no ground, okay? And that's the, the key to the performance, the high performance of the suspended line. So this is a front view of a, a suspended line. Here's the trace that goes inward in the Z direction. And underneath it, uh, is the substrate, could be duroid, could be uh, whatever material that you pick to, cho uh, to choose to implement the circuit board on. And then uh, the ground is actually the, the actual body of the what we call the channel, okay? Or in this case, it's just the enclosure. 
that encloses the the um, the uh, suspended line and the suspended line the key to the suspended line is that it's extremely low loss so in the case of lmb uh, satcom receiver you would want not to lose any fractions of a db uh, in the g over t because of the noise figure of the front end of your low noise block okay so lockdown converter so the, what we do is because since this feed line, that feed line is basically between the waveguide and the uh, LNA, we want that line to be extremely low loss. And just to illustrate this, so the, the beauty of this is if you look at the cross section of this, most of the E field will be concentrated in air actually, because relatively, if you look at this, the fractions, the, the, the dimensional fraction uh, the 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 dimensions of the substrate com in comparison to the uh, um, on top and bottom cavity air cavity where the line is suspended is so tiny that the almost the e field is is like traveling actually in waveguide and that's what we're going to show next so what i have uh, i set up a little experiment that will come back we'll come back to that so here's a little experiment where i show a um a little pieces of, of the uh, suspended line. Here's suspended line in here and a waveguide and a microstrip line. Microstrip line is the one where you have the, the ground plane underneath it. So it has a, and the suspended line doesn't. So when we run this one inch trace and one inch waveguide, we end up with this performance in terms of the loss. Oh, no, not this one. Always when I have multiple projects open, you always get confused which ones. So, oh, no, not even this. Okay, so we must be, oh, here it is. It's on this one. Okay, so let's look at this. What you're looking at here is basically the insertion loss from a waveguide, a macrostrip line, and a suspended line from five gigahertz all the way to 35 gigahertz. And you can see that as soon as you're right about KU band up above 10 gigahertz, you start seeing a big difference in term of loss. For instance, at 27 gigahertz, you can see that the loss in the macro strip line is about 0.5, a half dB. Uh, so if you're trying to implement an LNA, LMB, um, application uh, in the receiver front end that has a noise figure of at most say 0.5 dB or 0.7 dB, uh, having just 0.5 dB in the feed line is gonna be a huge disadvantage. So now when you look at the one inch um, uh, in comparison, the, um, the suspended line is only 0.1 dB loss. So there is 0.4 dB at least that that is of advantage that you can save and 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 keep that for as a headroom for the LNA devices that feeds up front. So just to look at this, um, just to show you the reason, the key why, and we mentioned this before, because almost the, the you can see that if from the cross section of the um, of the suspended lines, oh, let's look at the bottom. Okay, so if you look at the lines in here, this is a suspended line in here. And this is the micro strip line. If you look at the micro strip line, this is the key to it. You can see that, first of all, there is a dispersion in the E field, and that's happening because of the difference in material in here. This is the cross uh, line in here, that's looking in front. And you can see that uh, the wave basically the E field is concentrated in both air above the conductor and below the conductor in the substrate. And when that happens, of course, you're dealing with the tangent loss of the substrate. Uh, contrary to this, if you look at the uh, suspended line, look at this. The E field is distributed all around and most of it is in the air cavity where and the percentage of the E field that is in the substrate is so tiny compared to this. And, and this you can literally 
also see mathematically from the design equations for the characteristic impedance of the uh, suspended line. If you look at trace all these through equa these equations, these are well founded. If you type on Google suspended um, micro, um, suspended uh, strip line, you will get a lot of the the formulas in books and articles. And you can see that the dependency on the permittivity of the substrate is tiny. Uh, if you propagate in here, in fact, looking at um, at a, an online calculator for suspended line, and this is uh, on this website. You can you can go to it yourself. I plug this, and uh, the substrate permittivity is three point five five. If you come in here and you synthesize uh, a line. Uh, uh, for with five millimeter, it comes up fifty three with this geometry. Now let's assume that the 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 uh, permittivity drops to three. Uh, watch this number in here; it it barely changes. So, and that's another advantage of the suspended line is that their dependency, loss dependency, and phase velocity dependency is not really dependent on the substrate, and therefore it's not even dependent on temperature because, as you know. Temperature is a big enemy of substrate uh, changes. So let's go back here uh, to the um, transition. So here is here is the transition, and we ran this, and uh, the response on this. Let's look at the uh, the uh, performance, and here is the performance. You can see here that the uh, the 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 the, uh, this is tuned for um, around uh, um, to 27 and a half gigahertz, a good return loss, and the loss is very tiny over this percentage bandwidth. So this is good. So let's look at the uh, the E field just so that can, we can visualize what is happening, how the uh, TE10 is transformed into quasi TEM mode uh, on the uh, suspended line. So let's animate that. Okay, so you can see here, here's the wave guide. The wave travels through here and this couples to the batches and you can look at how the first batch, the parasitic batch uh, interaction with the actual fed batch with the signal going in here. And so we can view this literally on top, spit off. And we can, on the bottom, just to see how it is behaving and the side, right side, uh, let's get this. Um, you can see how nicely it works. Yeah. And off to the left and right side. So this works beautiful. Um, now, Having done this now, let's go and do this. Now we need, in this case, of course, this is a um, this is suspended line. So we still have to go on to the rest of the circuits. So this is applied to whether it's an LMB, LNA, um, repeater, uh, antenna feed, buck, transmitter. Uh, so you still have to transition from the microstrip from the suspended line in here, which doesn't have a ground layer on the substrate, to a, a micro strip line that you can implement the rest of your circuits. And of course, now this is the channel. See this channel in here? This is the channel, a metallic channel. This is basically what determines really what plays a role in the, in the characteristic impedance of the um, suspended line. As you can see, H1 and H2 of their asymmetrical, they have to be formed separately. Um, you can see that it, there's a great dependency and also the, this this opening has, to, uh, this channel has to be designed um, carefully so that you don't, uh, the RF doesn't leak um, uh, outside the formation of TE102, uh, TM, um, TM uh, uh, mode. And so this line, there is a there is a formula, I believe, for the cutoff frequency for this structure. It might be reported in here, so it's not, but it's available. You can look it up. Uh, a lot of the sources that treat this. So 
So you really have to worry about the uh, mechanical design of the channel in here that whole, that houses the suction, which has a suspended line in the transition area between the waveguide and the um, system that you're designing. So now, so let's go further into another design, which I have done. And this one basically is one where we're taking a, the uh, a suspended line, okay? That is this line in here, okay? Which has no ground at the bottom, but it, it is sandwiched. It's done in a way I designed this so that it's actually uh, practical to design because this metal here, you design it into two pieces and they come in and um, uh, get screwed to each other tightly with a lot of screws. So the board in here gets sandwiched between these two metal pieces. So th uh, this one is a transition that takes a, a um, suspended line with this structure in here and then converts it into a, um, a microstrip line. As you can see here, see where the the ground plane is only existing in the portion of the design that that that, that implements the macrostrop line. So uh, let's look at the behavior of this, and you can see now. Uh, let's see here. Results. Here is the uh, insertion loss from DC all the way to thirty gigahertz. And you can see that it's beautifully performing uh, with like the maximum loss at 30 gigahertz is only a, qu a quarter of a uh, dB, 0.25 dB, which is very impressive, uh, you know, compared to if you were to design this with a micro strip, this would be at least 7 tenths of a dB probably between 0.5 to 7 tenths of a dB loss. Now, uh, again, we like to animate things so that we can see the EM propagation. In this case, so it comes in, we're feeding from the, um, uh, the uh, suspended line onto the microstrip line. So you can see the vicinity where the E field basically existent in the air cavities in here. But when it comes to the microstrip suction, it literally doesn't have any E field on that. Let's let's look at it sideways so we can. Okay, so uh, the other way. Okay, this is top. Uh, let's look at the. Uh, okay, there we go. So you can see now that how the E field is basically. Look at this. This is the section that has a suspended line. This is the micro strip line in here. And these are the gate. By the way, the gate in here, I did two gates. I started with a, a a little bit high gate and then went downward. There is a little step. Uh, that's just to ease mechanical designs. And these would have to be filleted so that it's hard. It's easy for the CNC machine to do them. So the, all these designs, of course, we do them electrically, but then. This solid model has to go to a mechanical engineer and he will have to transform this into um, another design plan that, that, that can work in the, for the CNC um, crafting or the 3D printing if you do in 3D print. Okay, so here you have it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I've got a few more uh, waveguide to transmission line transitions, and then we'll go on to more interesting stuff. Dr. Mohammed Nazami, wish you the best. Thank you very much. Thank you.